Hello, and welcome to spring. Okay, it doesn't look like spring, but technically it is spring, and we are going to get some nice weather, finally, after a really bad winter, this week to start melting this stuff. And just to make me feel better, and hopefully you guys too, I'm going to start with some camper stuff that I haven't done before, RV stuff, so if you're into that, this video is for you. I am going to have more car stuff too, but uh, let's mix it up a bit, and uh, let's do some camper stuff. Hi folks, you probably noticed already that uh, this doesn't seem to be the, the shop that I've been in before, and you are right. This is, I'm going to say it's vehicle related, uh, but it's not a car. Uh, this is a RV uh, trailer actually that we got, and uh, I'm doing a few things to it uh, to get it ready. And one of the things that I was trying to figure out is what to do for a vacuum, and that's something I'm really... Just like cars for speed, I, I, uh, for pulling, I want to make sure everything is light as possible and functional. And I was looking at vacuum cleaners for RVs and what people use. And a lot of people have those little hand ones, which are okay. But uh, a lot of reading that I've seen on them, they don't suck as well as another option. And the other option seems hands down the the idea to go. And I'm gonna I'm gonna see how it is. I I. I only heard good things about it, and they put them in the big RVs, and it seems to be the only one available, but it's it's basically a central back floor RVs. I'll just come get it here. It's made by Dirt Devil. This is it. Essentially, we're going to put it in, and I'll show you a discrete space I found where I'm going to put it. I'm going to do a little test with it, too, and kind of give some feedback on what it's like for all those people that are interested in it. It is a little pricey, but when I think of some of the the handheld ones that upright and have the little detachment for you know this handheld stuff as well, they they are can be pricey as well. You know they range from a hundred bucks to I've seen them as far as a thousand bucks. This is kind of a mid range thing, you know, three four hundred bucks or whatever it was. I think it'll take care of things pretty quick. It'll be handy. Uh, I found a, I got a really low, good location. I'm going to find that won't. It's wasted space already, you'll see. So it won't take any room other than the hose. The hose is supposed to retract up to I think five or seven feet, but goes up to 25 or more feet. Uh, might be more than that, but we'll see. I'll even do a little unboxing here to start with and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, let's start with the unboxing. I haven't opened this up yet. yet. Uh, just so you know, I've, I did get this from Amazon. Uh, seems to be my go-to to get a lot of stuff. Uh, it just comes to my door and it's handy and generally their price is usually pretty good in comparison to others. Uh, it's not always the best though. You do have to be careful because sometimes it is cheaper other places. So let's have a look what we got here. Got a hose. And this looks like the long hose that is supposed to stretch. Actually it's pretty convenient. Let's see how it stretches. Well, it stretches pretty good, see? I mean, that's a bag here hose. These look like hose fittings for your central vac. Here's the port. And they kind of got the beige ivory one, which I'm surprised because everyone has white now. No one has this kind of color anymore. So it's kind of weird that they use that. Maybe for older campers, but uh, like I have actually black here. I might actually paint that just to match the rest in this camper. Brush attachment, little nozzle, good for the floors, good for crevices, and I'm assuming, geez, that is small. Look how small it is, guys, and that's in the box. I didn't realize how small this was, but this isn't going to take much room at all. Uh, I don't know exactly what it weighs. I'm going to say 5 to 10 pounds, maybe. So it's not going to cause a lot of weight issues. Boy, this is going to be nice. I, I really expect it to be a little bigger than this, guys. So good for uh, Dirt Devil cornering this market because I couldn't really see too many other options. Well, it looks like it can mount any way you want it. It's got uh, here you can mount it, or this side you can mount it. 
I'm sure how this works. Maybe that's the canister. Oh yeah. Stuff inside. I think you can directly wire it, maybe. There's the on off switch. That's probably what that wire is for for when you connect it. There's the bag. A little filter of some type. And oh. There's the instructions right there. So I think I'm gonna start with that. I don't need to read these with you. What I'll do is uh and stuff is I'll uh, kind of go through them and then give you kind of the, the brief summary of what this is but it looks like it's going to be pretty easy once I find the spot and I'll, I'll show that to you as well. All right so after ripping the camper completely apart not, not completely but quite a bit I've now decided where I'm putting it. There's a couple reasons why I picked where I did. Now my first choice when I thought I was going to put it was in a in a spot here where you can see there's just a a blank board right there I don't know if you can see in there that really it's all empty space that seemed like a really good spot couple things that don't work there I realized the biggest one I need to be able to change the bag in the canister which goes in here when it's full so that is a problem I want to make it very accessible that way even though we want to hit it another one is Something I identified too is this draws 10 amps or up to 10 and a half amps. And as you know, in a camper, there's only a couple of breakers everything runs on. So I, I want to maybe run it to something that uh, is convenient, I guess, to a degree. And another thing is this doesn't have an outlet like a normal house central vac as far as the, the to vent it out. It's just got this here, so you don't want to put it in too airtight of a space. So I'm careful about that as well. So then I was looking at, well, what if I put another breaker in over there? Let's see what I could put in and access there easily because there is room for more breakers in the panel. As you can see, there is no room in there to put it. And then I might be taking out pepper space and stuff that I don't want to do. So next I started looking around and the fortunate thing about this hose, this camper is 25 feet inside from end to end, and that is one corner. And that hose certainly can stretch all the way over to the, the farthest corner if I put it over here. Now this is the furnace area, but up here there's lots of space and there's a nice wood panel up here that I can actually join. I'll probably sit it like that. I can join right here and bolt it up the other nice part about that is because it's a furnace area this piece here is, a, is actually a vented uh, finishing piece here on the end so it's going to get be able to to blow lots of air out as well so that won't be a restriction just going to have a lot of air puffing out there i guess but that's fine the other thing I like about that is I'm going to have an outlet here and if I want to have the hose kind of go outside to this door then that's good too. That's my house by the way. It's just in my yard right now. And then the next thing is I can actually there is a separate breaker just for the microwave itself up there and the line runs right in here and actually this is it here. So I'm going to tap into that for power. So as long as we don't run the microwave and the central vac at the same time, we'll be fine compared to if we run it on the multi-circuits that are around the whole camper. I don't want them to run it where the um, fridge goes. I'm trying to remember all this stuff. Oh, the air conditioner is another one where we could shut it off, but it's more of a pain. It's fairly easy to remember not to use the microwave and chances are that you're using both. Eh, probably won't happen and that's part of camping life. So that's where I'm going to put it. So I need to get a few things, uh, not too much, really. I'm going to get a just a little electric box to tap into that wire. Another thing I'm going to do is, this is the inlet right here. And I don't know why they send a beige one. Even a white one would be better. I don't know if anyone has the beige, ivory, whatever color this is called anymore. Those usually are an old things. And... I have black outlets, see, 
So I got some uh, plastic paint. I'm gonna just give this a spray of paint. It shouldn't wear too bad. All right, so after making sure this is exactly where I wanna put it, I have uh, decided where I'm gonna put the inlet. Basically, it's gonna go right here. This is pretty cheap stuff, so I think it'll saw out pretty good. This actually goes on the inside, and then the actual inlet itself on this other on this side will go in that way. So it'll end up going like it'll end up going like that. few minutes just slipping time in a different way oh you're still there all right okay back to work what I've basically done uh, is went to Home Depot twice for um, what becomes renovations I'm I'm sure things get away on you guys as well I can show you what happened and because of it, I ended up going to Home Depot twice for something less than $10 each time. And guess, uh, it probably happens with you guys as well, you can't go to Home Depot without buying other stuff and ever get out of there less than $100, usually more. And this is no fault of the vacuum. It's the, the fault of human nature and maybe guys, I don't know, girls, chime in if you're there too, comment. But... Uh, yeah, you browse around and you buy other stuff. So I did that. So let's show you what happened. I've got scrapes from what I did too, but I'm happy I did it. But uh, it'll be a little sidebar from doing the vacuum install, central vacuum install. Bless this couch is darn comfortable. What I did is I added a plug. Just if you can see it there. Uh, let's see it. Man, it's a black plug, so it's kind of hard to see. There it is. For where the central vac is going in here. And I tie that into the microwave. It only had its own, as I think I said before. It, it has its own breaker separate, so made sense. Just don't run the, the vac microwave and the central vac at the same time. It'll be fine. But I also wanted extra plugs in here. So I ended up, since that's there and doesn't have much on it, and won't be using those two devices at the same time or often even at all I decided to add another one MW is this microwave so I know it's on that circuit and that'll be handy and I also added a, another one which is actually on the same breaker as well MW and breaker wave those are my breakers you can see where there's microwave obviously I'm going to be having a heater in here, electric heater sometimes. You know when you pay that charge no matter what, how much electricity you use? Well, it doesn't make sense to use propane. So buy a little heater as well. It's kind of a cool little unit. Uh, this is it. It looks like a little fireplace, but it's an electric heater. It's almost 1500 watts, I think. Very small. If you want to know how small it is, there's my hand. Um, I don't know what size of hand I got, but you get the idea anyway. So that's going to plug into there. I'm not sure where I want to put it yet, but we're uh, doing that. So that happened. And while I was putting that in, this is kind of the confession part of it. I ended up not realizing it. And this is the start of the circuit is this one, this outlet. And then it kind of daisy chains the rest of them. And when I put it in the neutral, the white connector for those in electrical, broke off, didn't know it, and the microwave quit. And I didn't know the microwave, what the heck was wrong with it, because everything seemed to check out okay otherwise, because it still got the bonding ground, but the microwave wasn't happy. So I ended up taking the microwave out, which was a little bit of a chore. I'm glad I did it. And what happened is, and you can see where it kind of butchered here, is they, whoever installed this, didn't put this screw on right there I've got it in now but it was kind of notched right out 
and to get that bugger out uh, there was no way other than to rip what I did so I got that out so I'm glad that's fixed because if I'm on the road and there's a microwave problem now I know I can get it out that's done and then what ended up happening is I didn't need to take the microwave out because it was a broken neutral on that plug at the start of the circuit so I didn't need to do it glad I did it it's the next day and I haven't got the central back put in so that's what I'm going to do I got the electrical in it at least the other thing I'll show you is this is the the inlet that I painted it's a little dusty and I'll show you what I used it works really good it's the M black trim black I don't remember I think I got this from an auto body shop to be honest that sell or they just sell auto body supplies but it works really good I've used it for a lot of car stuff I use it for here it hardens over 48 hours and it's pretty good but um, it can scratch and I'll show you why uh, or what I did here is I painted the outside and not the inside and before you, you OCD guys because I'm pretty OCD too and would want that black as well you don't see it when the covers on but uh, the reason I did is because this is gonna get scuffed up from putting the hose in so there, I, I'd rather not have scuffed up scratches look and just have the, the, the two-tonal called ivory on the inside I, I just that's my OCD part of it I guess is that this looks better to me so now I am finally gonna start mounting this central back all right it's in you can see the inlet we've seen that before come down there this inlet turns uh on when you when you open the lid a lot of you have a central vac in your house it's controlled by a switch on the hose when you plug your hose in uh, you could probably convert that if you wanted to but there is no switch on the hose that comes with it and i think you want to keep using this hose because of how much it shrinks down for storage and can go up past at least 25 feet anyway i know that and it shrinks up to like seven feet and can be stored pretty easy so i don't think it's a big deal uh, I think that's the way the traditional central vacs were years ago when they first came out anyway. Uh, what I did do is, I just, uh, to lower it, I put some 2x4s in there as well just to mount so I could lower it. And then we can easily access the, the bag and the cute little bag that's in there, I guess. And we change it out when we have to. Um, some of you might think that bag's a little small. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that is. Uh, the other thing is I'm going to do is this cover is a vent for I mean it's part of the furnace as well in there obviously that's the furnace um, I'm going to put this on a on a hidden hinge and make this a door that swings open so changing bags plus it's nice access rather than it being screwed in like it was before which is just a pain in the ass and eventually you know what happens with the, the cheap stuff that this is made out of it's just going to strip eventually those screws from opening and closing and it's a pain anyway so that'll get changed with that uh the first time i think uh let's just vacuum up some stuff and see if he talks In case you're wondering how much to store or how much it takes to store this, there's a reference of how much this is. Um, it uh, It's pretty tiny. So not a lot of storage space needed for this. All right. So now that we've done the, the full install on it, which honestly was pretty easy. I'll go through a little bit of a, a review of it and, and then a final rating in, in my opinion. And we'll call it the slipping time rating. What uh, I found for sure, engineering wise, so far it looks pretty basic, which I like. Uh, it, it is nice and compact unit. I, I think for any any camper, uh, and I have seen them in v you know very large motorhomes and the you know the luxury liners that are a million dollars. So they must work very well in there as far as that goes. But uh, the Keeping them simple and compact is definitely necessary. Uh, they don't, I don't know what the actual weight is, but I think they're they're pretty good. They're definitely, because you can hide them better than the handheld ones, because you're not going to store them in a hidden place like I did. 
uh, overall. I mean, you still got the hose, but that's not going to be the same as when you're inhaled. As far as suction, um, I don't know the you know the the inches it can suck and all that, but uh, it certainly did well when I tested it. I, uh, I can't complain. I mean, for a household or or a shop, even it, it's fine the way it sucks. Uh, no, no pun intended because it doesn't suck. In a way, you've got different options to mount. That makes it easy as well. Uh, I guess the only thing I would say changing maybe is having where you want, if you want to have the inlet on a different side option, maybe of the the box itself that it came in, you know, the, the chassis itself. Maybe you might want that. I was able to make do because it, it gives you kind of be a lot of options where you can have it, you know, you can have it on its side, you can have it right side. I know there's different ways you can see how to mount it as well. So it gives you lots of lots of leeway that way. But you may come into a situation where you just want it to uh, be that inlet be on a different corner or something and maybe they that would be nice but it, it'd be hard to do in such a compact thing if you pull this lid off here to change the bags you actually can mount it any way you want um, because it's totally square and the way it, the pins go in for removing it and locking it in so you can actually have your name straight no matter how which way you've got it so that's kind of good practicability uh, I you don't get much more practical than central vac for some people don't like central vacs we have it in our house love it obviously in a in a shop it's really nice too because you don't have to wheel around a vacuum all the time which you've got a number of outlets you just need a hose and away you go the price itself the way i kind of look at the price i think uh that's fair what it was it was you know it depends where you buy it it can be you know i'll say 300 bucks might be 400 bucks might be a little less uh, it's pretty reasonable when you think of a central vac for your home you're going to spend you know a thousand bucks for a good one perhaps 1500 bucks and you can go up from there compared to the handheld ones that you get i've seen them range from you know they might even be slightly less than 100 bucks uh, on the cheap side and then you can go up to like some of them are crazy where you can go a thousand bucks for them as well i guess if you want that removable little handheld one to, to clean up little spills quickly you know if it's on a charger base that is a problem perhaps uh, ease of install was honestly I keep looking over there because of the that's where it is uh, the ease of install it couldn't be much easier than this it's easier than doing a central vacuum in your house no doubt uh, the only really decision is where you're going to put it you can have it actually so the hose goes right into the device or you can do like I did where you have a have an inlet port and so there's lots of choices there too but it, honestly it's easy to install the only thing I would say that you know and I don't know if it's a negative yet and I'm again trying to look at square footage compared to a house the bag size seems very small now to have a compact unit that's going to be you know, something that you got to work with I guess too because you want it to be a compact unit it's not a canister that you just dump it does use bags perhaps they could use a canister that it, you don't have to buy bags all the time the jury's out a little bit on that on how much that'll be a problem so this is just an honest opinion from what I've seen we seem to like it uh, my wife has looked at it as well and she's pretty tickled with it as well so um, either of us will be fine with it so I am going to give it an 8.5 from first impressions I do plan um, if these videos have any type of good contribution to people out there and I'll be able to tell that by the views I probably will come back and do an update in a year or so or after a season or two and just tell you about the reliability and also what our opinion is it after using it for a while and maybe even talking to more people out in the campgrounds what they have and, and discussing it but right now i'm going to give it an 8.5 i would recommend this product especially if you are searching for a vacuum right now if you already got a vacuum but you're thinking of maybe getting something better this might be the solution but i'd also like to know if you've done the dirt devil central vac system or have it in your rv what is your experience with it and do you love it do you hate it what would you change about it uh, i think it'd be good for the folks to know again this is a community and uh, I think everyone should provide their opinions so people can make informed decisions. So yeah, thanks again for watching. 
Uh, please share and subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.